Welcome to Bayesian Statistics, thinking about probability distributions. So, so far, we've talked about discrete distributions and continuous distributions, and we know that the density or just probability function, density, fun not density, probability distribution function for discrete is just the probability that x equals little x. Uh, we know that it is greater than zero all the time, greater than or equal to zero, and all the probabilities sum up to one. We talked briefly about the continuous distribution and how we had to really kind of back up and rethink on this. And we talked about a com uh, cumulative distribution function, and it's between 0 and 1. And to get to a density function, we would take the derivative of it, and that derivative is always greater than or equal to 0. And if we were to integrate this uh, density, it's going to come out to be equal to 1. Uh, I actually didn't cover these last two in the other videos, but I'm going to put them here just so that you're aware. And uh, this last one tends to be a big deal is, is the distribution proper? So you might hear that word, but we'll talk about it more as we go along. All right, so uh, we want to be able to look at probability distributions, and most people are used to seeing histograms, right? You would collect some data, you would plot it, and you'd say, here is my histogram. But um, this isn't the best approach. Okay, histograms have the problem that they imply a continuous distribution, right? There's everything's filled in, okay? But if I'm a discrete distribution, things aren't filled in. So what I might want is like this stick plot here, right? It shows there's a stick going up at each of the values that actually have some probability on it. Uh, and then in this case, they're integers or whole numbers. And uh, so all of these heights of these sticks represent the probability associated with that value. It's uh, pretty straightforward, makes it easy. You know that it's uh, clearly discrete things we should look for. So if I had something like this, I would be looking for, uh, to describe it, well, what's the range of values? So from here, 0 to 15. See, it's red here and red here. And then I would interest it in the center, and I'm going to guess it's maybe 5-ish, 6-ish. So I'm going to put down 5. Uh, the mode of the distribution, which is the highest point, and it says if it exists, because sometimes they don't exist uh, in a unique sense. And this is a case where it's not unique, right? We have two of them. It looks like four and five are exactly the same height, and they are. Okay, so we put down four and five. It's bimodal. I would write that along with it because it has two modes. And the skewness. And here, skewness, you can see that's right-tailed because the tail goes out to the right. It looks like it's being pulled by your right hand if you were to take a symmetric distribution and pull on it. Uh, there's actually a more formal definition, but we'll talk about that later. Now, these are important because later we're going to need to specify these. When we're trying to set up a prior distribution, we're going to have to say some of these things. So we need to know what they are and we need to feel comfortable with it. All right, so let's talk about a continuous distribution. Uh, again, you can use a histogram. Uh, it's not very accurate when the distribution is known. We know the distribution under this, uh, or the probability density. Um, so why would we be using something like this? Uh, because the resolution is chosen by the program uh, that you use. Maybe it's R, in this case, or SPSS, or whatever, and you're stuck with it. Uh, in general, histograms are used for data, not actual probability distributions. Okay, so we'd instead use a density plot. It actually shows the curve. It's highly accurate. We have a point almost at every point we can look at. They're all interpolated, so boy, it just looks like a smooth curve. And we're going to look for the same things as before. Here, how is this spread out? I'm going to say, well, most of it, the mass of the distribution, this big bulk of it here, is between 2 and 7. You could have said 2 and 6. Probably still be reasonable, right? We're, we're just trying to get a general description. Where would we guess the center of this thing to be? And I'm going to guess it to be at about 4, because it, since it's skewed to the right, I'm going to have it be probably a little more right than I would have originally thought. Uh, the mode of the distribution, if it exists, and the mode is the highest point, and this one has one that is unique, okay? And that happens to be at 3.7. So we could look there and kind of trace down and see that it's about 3.7. We can all look. So look at the skewness here. So the skewness is here off to the right, and you can see it quite well. Um, 
over here, so it's clearly skewed off to the right because it seems like it's being pulled in that direction. And again, we're going to have to specify these later, or we might have to specify them, so we have to really understand the ideas and not just so we go, yeah, 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 I need something for my research and I don't care uh, with regular you know, statistical methods. Here you're going to have to understand probability distributions quite well in order to be able to function with them. All right, so let's do a little quiz time here. How about this stick plot? Um, what's its range of values? Well, it looks like it goes between 0 and 20. The center, uh, maybe 8 or 9. I don't know. Somewhere in here, right? Because the bulk of it's over here, and then there's a bulk over here. The mode of the distribution, um, looks like it has four of them. One, two, three, and four. So it looks like four and five and maybe 16 and 17. And the skewness, it's uh, probably right skewed. So uh, the range, zero to 20, center is around eight. The mode is around four and five and 16 and 17. And I'm going to call this quad modal because there are four modes to this thing. And it's right skewed. How about this one? So this is a continuous one. Uh, and notice when it's like this, it's really clear that it's a discrete distribution. And it's really clear that this is a continuous distribution. So if I were to look at this and look for the spread, I would say this goes between 0 and 20. The center of the distribution, I'm guessing, is going to be around 12, maybe. Uh, the mode of the distribution, well, this thing actually has three modes, right? One, two, and three. Um, and the skewness, this is actually going to be skewed left because there's a bulk of it pulled away from the mass of it over here. So it's probably be skewed left. And there's an official definition that we'll talk about later that will make more sense. All right, so I said 0 to 20, center maybe around 12, the mode of distribution 3, 12, and 17, and the skewness is left. All right, so now that we have some feelings about the distributions, we can actually start doing some Bayesian statistics, and that's what we're going to jump into next time, which is the process. And we're going to look at a simple experiment and try to set everything up to where we can work our way through it. All right, so see you then.